वेलकम टू अभिपीडिया पावर्ड बाय अभिमन्यु आईएस फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल विशिंग एवरीवन अ वेरी मैरी क्रिसमस दिस इज आवर एट लेक्चर इन द सीरीज एंड वी विल बी कवरिंग इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक्स फ्रॉम प्री पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू इन दिस लेक्चर दिस इज द आवर एट लेक्चर इन साइंस एंड टेक वैल्यूडेशन सीरीज एंड टॉपिक फॉर दिस वीक इज वंस अगेन ऑन एक्सपेक्टेड लाइंस व्हिच इज प्राइमरीली अ प्री टॉपिक व्हिच ऑल ऑफ यू मस्ट हैव कवर्ड बाय नाउ दिस इज क्यू आर एस ए एम एंड पिनाका हैज बीन सक्सेसफुली टेस्टफाइड बाय डी आर डी वी हैव सीन इन अवर लास्ट लेक्चर दैट आफ्टर नाइट ट्रायल ऑफ अग्नि थ्री फेल्ड डी आर डी ओ बाउंस बैक विद सक्सेसफुल टेस्टिंग ऑफ ब्रह्मोस क्रूज मसाइल एंड इट हैज फॉलोड अप विद बैक टू बैक सक्सेस ऑफ पिनाका एंड क्यू आर एस एम मिसाइल सिस्टम सो आई बी डिस्कसिंग वॉट दीज टू टर्मिनोलॉजीज मीन what is the significance of these tests and as usual what is the likely pre questions which can be framed from such topics so first of all let's focus on qr sam because this theme we had not covered in our class lecture so most of, for most of you it can be a new one first of all whenever some acronym appears in a news you first should decode what the terminology is like for qrsm it is quick reaction surface to air missile surface to air missile is a common theme which we had covered so just the term qr is a new one for you in case you are uh, have not uh, covered our class lectures so quick reaction surface to air missile has been successfully tested and like all other missile systems or other defense systems we should be thorough with what what are the organizations which are involved in development what are the basic components which form this system what is the strike range what is the significance of this mission so without wasting any time let's start with the development part so first of all we have to understand that whether this system is a totally indigenization based example of developed by india or it's some collaborative project like brahmos like in brahmos you could recall it was joint venture of india and russia but here you have to understand this is a totally a indigenization system developed by drdo so to if we go in more into intricacies of development part it is designed by defense research development organization drdo and it is manufactured by bharat electronics limited and bharat uh, dynamics limited so these are the organizations which are involved in the development process so after development we have to understand that what are the basic components of this qr sam so to to make it simplified there are four major components which are which form qr sam technology the first is an fully automated command and control system then there is a comprehensive radar system which is described in newspapers as active array battery surveillance radar system and active array battery multifunctional radar system these are four walled radar system providing 360 degree coverage of the region and also there is a launcher which would be launching that surface to air missile then once you have covered the basic components the range is to be which is a factual information should also be covered that almost what is the range to which it can provide the sufficient cover so its a range is around 25 to 30 km so you could jot down if you are noting this down for the first time that the range is 25 km to 30 km now comes the important part that what is the site from which it has been tested we all know that for defense the preferred site is chandipur so integrated test uh, range which was in news in last week due to of Brahm, due to brahmos successful testing is once again in news and the site remains same so it's in odisha state now let's discuss the significance of this trial was it the first ever trial which is as highlighted or it's some routine uh, testing which is been carried out so that's the important part because if ups is going to frame a statement based question likely the significance part would be asked so the test first of all the test has been successful it has uh, given uh, met the all the requirements for the test which were in terms of accuracy and precision so that is the major significant part and this was the seventh trial 
of this QR SAM system that the tests have been going on since 2017 and uh, except the third test all uh, have been success stories. So after the seven tests finally the testing phase of this QR SAM is over. Now we will induct this and as per media reports this system is likely to be inducted into Indian Army by 2021. So most likely you might see one other uh, dress run or it can be directly inducted now because the green signal has been given. So this is what is QR SCM, surface to air missile system. This is an important one because at times some enemy state might use some drone or some aircraft or some missile system to infiltrate and at time this uh, competent radar system can detect it timely and shoot it down with accuracy. So this QR SM system, uh, is, we also have Israel spider system which is on similar lines but this indianization is a key thing because we required to master this technology on indigenous basis. Now let's discuss the second part that's equally important, Pinaka. This we had covered uh, in our class lectures as well, but this would be a revision because we, here we will be covering this topic once again qualitatively. So first of all, just like your SAM, you have to, here you can understand this is not an acronym. First of all, like in KURSM was an acronym, this is a full-fledged word and you should uh, go into the genesis of the word that what Pinaka literally means. So this um, has roots in mythology, it has been described as the bow used by Lord Shiva. So it will be used for destruction, so the name is quite appropriate one, it will, it will be used against enemy as a tactical weapon. If you are reading newspaper, it is described as multi-barrel rocket launcher system, MBRL. So MBRL of India is Pinaka. First of all, let's discuss what uh, has been the development aspect of this Pinaka system. Uh, and once again, this is an example of indigenization of technology. And by now, you could clearly guess which organization will be spearheading the design part. It's DRDO, Defense Research Development Organization. And manufacturing part, there are multiple agencies which are currently involved in. There is Ordnance Factory Board, there is a, a, a Tata Power SED, then there is Larsen Top Row. So multiple organizations are manufacturing this, but the key aspect which you have to memorize is that it is designed by DRDO. Now coming to components of Pinaka, there are six launch, uh, a typical Pinaka battery consists of six launch vehicles, each is loaded with 12 rockets, so that makes them equivalent to 72 rockets and there are other uh, six uh, 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 replenishment load vehicles which are followed by two command systems which are uh, technical details. So basically you have to understand that there are six vehicles each loaded with 12 rockets and the best part is that all can be fired within 44 seconds. So you, if you want to cause destruction to enemy site, you want to do heavy shelling, then this is the idle thing which you can employ of at your edge. It will definitely provide you tactical advantage which you are seeking. And there is a flexibility. It's, done, it's not that you have to fire all 72 at one go. There is a flexibility. You might fire 4, 8, 10 as per your requirement. So this is quite destructive artillery system of Indian Army which is not in testing phase, it's already employed uh, there. Now this is what is components is about. Then let's discuss the strike range that what the distance it could uh, literally cover. So there are different versions of this Pinaka system. Generally when you will see news you will see MK1, MK2 return. Like if the, in the current affair, the one which is in use, MK2 version was <coughs> test fired. <coughs> MK1 has a range of 40 kilometers, whereas MK2 has a range of around 75 kilometers. Recently, uh, there are, it is in testing phase, uh, extended version even can go till 90 kilometers, which is quite a sufficient range to hit the target with precision. So make sure in current Pinaka system it was tested, you are thorough with the range as well. Now the testing site is once again the similar one as the one of KURSM, it's ITC, Integrated Test Train at Chandipur, Odisha. 
and the significance of this test is that once again DRDO has demonstrated that it is capable of shooting the targets with precision and accuracy and this system is uh, uh, it was quite useful in Cargill War. In 1999 it for captain many uh, hilltops the system was successfully employed and it gave the returns. So this is a quite a destructive system which we are uh, once again upgrading in terms of range and it is always in use. It stands true to its name and has been serving the needs of Indian Defence Forces. Lately it has been integrated with the IRNSS system. IRNSS, you, we have covered in our class lecture, is Indian Regional Navigation Satellite System, which is our, uh, you, if you could recall, there were two types of services which IRNSS provides. One is the SPS1, Standard Positioning Service, which are provide, uh, which are, serves the civilian needs, and RS, Restricted Service. RS are encrypted service available only to authorized users, in, in this case our military agencies. So that's another associated topic which uh, is in news when this Pinaka has been a test fire. So make sure or you are, uh, are thorough with all the nitty gritties of these two themes and these are the broad pillars which you have to cover when such current affairs are in use. Development, their strike range, the basic components, you don't have to go to exact uh, technical technicalities of the component, at least the broader version, that is the radar system, what is its range, what are the relaunch vehicle, how many rockets it can fire, these are some basics which you could cover and ultimately the significant part. So just like uh, other lectures, here we are once again I am highlighting what are the additional topics which you should ideally cover uh, so that uh, if the difficulty of question is uh, easy, moderate to tough one then you should be mentally prepared to deal with it. So in this uh, given theme, the first of all you could see surface to air missile word is in news. So you should be thorough with the history of surface to air missiles or some the relevant examples which are in this category. In IGM DP program, there are two missiles which fall under this surface to air missile category. There is Trishul and there is Akash. Now, both these missiles are uh, were developed under IGM DP. And uh, the warhead capacity is also different. One can one of them can carry only 15 kg of warhead, the other can carry up to 50 kg of warhead. So these are already there in your class text, so we don't have to write them again. But make sure you are thorough with that, that there are other surface to air missiles as well. Then other surface to air missile which you could uh, cover is Barak 8, which is Indo-Israel project and uh, which is once again a surface to air missile which we have jointly developed uh, by DRDO and Israel. So these are surface to air missiles which at least you should give a quick reading at. Then since I have highlighted the role of IR and SS, so which is NAVIC, you should also go through your space lectures and revise the basics of IR and SS. Then there are seven satellite system, three in geostationary orbit, four in geosynchronous, there is a ground station at Bailuru in Bangalore. So all these basic facts have to be revised. Already UPSC has asked one pre-question in IR, on IR and SS, uh, even uh, in mains as well. So this is an important topic, so there is no harm in revising uh, IR and SS system once again. And other associated topics can be classification of missiles as well as other uh, sur surface to air missile feature and international technology which I have highlighted in the slide is a broader main theme which you should keep a track of because this word appears in your syllabus as well. If you would, will go through the UPSC label, there is a specific line which is inserted which says indigenization of technology. So this both are representing indigenization of technology. So make sure even IRM SS was a example of indigenization of technology. So these themes are to be revised from pre as well as mains point of view. Keep a track of them because as I have highlighted that as per CIPRI report, India still is number two in terms of arm importer and we need to develop more and more of uh, these defense equipments by own so that we could improve our rankings and make, make in India a successful uh, program. So finally, let's discuss a prelim question or a practice question for, from this theme. Uh, I have framed once again a moderate level question. 
so that uh, we could revise all the themes collectively. The first one is, Pina I have written that Pinaka is an indigenous cruise missile. No, it, you have to understand, yes, Pinaka is indigenous, but it has nothing to do with the cruise missile system. Cruise, we had covered in our last lecture of this validation series, was Brahmos. And there's another missile, Nirbhaya, which is uh, uh, of, of cruise category, otherwise there is no other missile which can be classified as cruise. So first statement is straight away wrong and we have just discussed that it's a rocket launching, multi barrel rocket launching system. So first one gets eliminated. Then Akash, I have highlighted that it is a air to air missile. From name, yes, it's an air uh, missile. But when I say air to air, this statement is technically wrong because Akash is surface to air missile. India has air-to-air -air missile, it's called Astra, which is fitted in LCA Tejas. So in case uh, you are just watching this video, you could add to your example, Astra, example of Astra in air-to-air -air category. Then the third uh, Trishul is developed as part of IGMDP is a correct statement. Uh, as you, uh, we have covered in our last lecture as well, there are five missiles which form IGMDP program. There is Trishul, there is Akash, there is Prithvi, there is Agni and there is Nag. So these missiles are formed part of IGMDP program. So the third is a correct one. So this is what the question was asking you to decode. And finally Berak 8 as I have discussed, it's not a surface to surface missile. It is a surface to air missile and even country is Israel. It's not US. So make sure uh, you once you are reading the questions, you are reading each and every word, word carefully. Because if you are just reading the half statement, almost all questions had some partial part which was correct. So since we are in last week of December, so make sure by now you are in pre-mode and practicing more such questions on a regular basis so that you could improvise and make uh, these mistakes in these practice sessions rather than making at the examination stage. So that's it for now. Thank you for your time. I hope this session was useful to you and you could subscribe to the channel in case you have not subscribed and there are other series which are available in our lectures right from geography, history, post-independence, personalities. You could, they are given in our description link. You could go through them. I will be back soon with another informative lecture in science and tech validation series. Once again, Merry Christmas to all of you.